Peace. What's up to y'all? It's Phil James coming back to you today. It is Wednesday, September 12th, 2018, and it is 12 12 p.m. As you can see up there at the top right. Now, we are in my web browser and we are on a website here by NBCnews.com. That's the website, NBCnews.com. And as you can see, the title. U.S. officials suspect Russia in mystery attacks on diplomats in Cuba and China. Now, what mystery attacks? Well, none other than the sonic attacks that I have covered in a video almost six months ago. Probably even more, maybe. But they're referring to the sonic attacks that took place in Cuba and in China now because it's more than just one spot. And... Nobody seems to know how or why it happened. Now, apparently due to intelligence from the FBI, CIA, and whatever agencies that we have that were spying on Russia, they found intelligence that proves, not enough though, that Russia is indeed behind it. So here, U.S. officials suspect Russia in mystery attacks on diplomats in Cuba and China, or should I say sonic attacks. The strong suspicion that Russia was behind the alleged attacks is backed by signals intelligence, meaning intercepted communications, say U.S. officials. The mystery, who or what caused American officials living in these Havana homes and several hotels to suffer headaches, dizziness, and some serious brain injuries similar to a concussion. Last year, Cuban investigators told us they would never allow their territory to be used that way. But now Russia is the leading suspect, NBC News has learned, according to three U.S. officials and two others briefed Sorry. on the investigation. Evidence, they say, backed up by highly secret communications intercepts collected during a lengthy and ongoing investigation involving the FBI, CIA, and other agencies. U.S. officials also tell NBC News investigators now believe the Americans were deliberately targeted. This is not an accident, and those who, who think this is some sort of rogue operation, I think, are, are operating in a fantasy. World. The State Department says it is still investigating. We have not assigned any blame, and we continue to look into this. Why would Russia target American officials? The leading theory to disrupt President Obama's opening to then-Cuban leader Raul Castro. No comment tonight from the Cubans or the Russians. Washington. Intelligence agencies investigating mysterious attacks, or sonic attacks, that led to brain injuries in U.S. personnel in Cuba and China consider Russia to be the main suspect. Three of course, three U.S. officials and two others briefed on the investigation tell NBC News. Three times six, or three times two, six, right there. Just saying. The suspicion that Russia is likely behind the alleged sonic attacks is backed up by evidence from communication intercepts known as, in the spy world, as signals inter inter intelligence. Signals intelligence. I'm sorry, I'm reading ahead of myself. Embassed during a lengthy and ongoing investigation involving the FBI and the CIA and other U.S. alphabet agencies, the officials declined to elaborate on the nature of the intelligence. My guess is probably because there is none. And we're just looking to go to war with Russia in this, you know, staged world that we live in. So it's all planned out, of course. And like I said in my video yesterday on about the space station hall, it's in the Russian section, and now they're saying it's sabotage all during the time that we're talking about a space force. You know what I'm saying? So, guys, I would be very aware of what's to come. So, by the way, live stream tonight. Wing it Wednesdays, just so you know. All right. Let's carry on with the article here. The evidence is not yet conclusive enough, however, for the U.S. to formally assign blame to Moscow for incidents that started in late 2016 and have continued in 2018, causing major a major rupture in U.S.-Cuba relations. So here's another video that we're going to check out. Russia suspected in mystery attacks on diplomats, but how involved was the Cuban government? It's all right. All right. And now to.
to an NBC News exclusive report on who may be responsible for the medical mystery that sickened 26 diplomats and intelligence officials, all Americans, in Cuba almost two years ago. Intelligence officials now believe Russia is the leading suspect, and that it was no accident, according to three U.S. officials and two others briefed on the investigation. Backing up their suspicions, highly secret communication intercepts. Joining me now, two experts, Javon Zarate, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President George W. Bush, and an MSNBC senior national security analyst, and NBC's national political reporter, Josh Lederman, who did a lot of this reporting. Uh, Josh, you and the team have been working on this for quite a long time. I was down in Havana last October talking to intelligence officials there. Uh, there have been suspicions all along, but you really honed in on Russia being the prime suspect, according to these officials. No evidence, no proof, no ability to accuse Russia diplomatically, but they are the real suspects. That's right. Russia had been a suspicion from the start due to their large presence on the island of Cuba, their advanced military capabilities. And as you first reported from Havana, even the Cubans had acknowledged that was a possibility. But now, Andrea, this is really more than a theory. This is the main suspect, and it's backed up with at least some information from some communications intercepts known as signals intelligence that officials tell NBC News that the U.S. government has developed. But, Andrea, it's not yet conclusive enough for the U.S. to take what would be a very dramatic step of formally accusing Russia of being behind these attacks. Uh, so the United States will continue to develop evidence, try to hunt this down, both who was behind it and exactly what the technology was used that has affected these diplomats. And Josh and Juan, I talked to former Secretary John Kerry about this yesterday as to how Russia would be involved, and this is what he had to say. Russia's been there the whole time, Andrea. That's not new that Russia is in Cuba or involved with Cuba. Russia's been the lifeline for them in many ways the entire period of time. So that is not going to change either. And what he said is that Russia is there, but what's happened, Juan, is that to, first of all, safeguard our, our people there, mm -hmm. they were pulled back, but it also fit, let's say, coincidentally or conveniently with the Trump administration's desire to change the Obama opening to Cuba and to, to basically shut down relations. And that's what's happened And that we've left the field to Russia. So Russia is now all over the island in terms of intelligence gathering. And the U.S. is basically without any real weapons. Yeah, I, I think the reality, Andrea, is that the Cold War never ended for many in the Cuban government as well as parts of the Russian government, including President Putin. And I think the Russians have never really left Cuba and they've sent signals to the United States that they were not going to be absent, not just from Cuba, but also Venezuela in the region. Uh, and this also comes at a time when Russia is much more aggressive, acting with impunity around the world. You have the nerve agent attacks uh, in London. You have the cyber attacks on our electoral system, on systems in Eastern Europe. You have provocative military exercises happening now as we speak, the largest uh, in recent modern memory um, in Eastern Russia. And so this is a, another demonstration. If it proves to be right, if Josh's uh, reporting is correct, that the Russians have taken yet another step to use asymmetric attacks to affect U.S. interests, whether it's sonic weapons, electromagnetic weapons, microwave weapons, whatever you have, you have the U.S. now having to confront yet another vector of attack from the Russians. And one other thing that comes out of our new reporting is that this is not an accident. This is not a microwave listening device gone bad. This is an attack yeah. against American diplomats and intelligence officers, and it was targeting them. Absolutely. I, I think there are a number of factors you look at, Andrea, as you know, any investigator or intelligence officer would look at. One, you have the, the number of attacks. So this happened in 2016. It also began to recur in 2018. And so this isn't just random. Uh, this al also isn't just part of some rogue operation. Uh, we have indications it may have happened in China as well. Uh, you have the number of officials targeted, the facilities that are targeted, diplomatic facilities, intelligence officials. And so this is not an accident. And those who, who think this is some sort of rogue operation, I think, are, are operating in a fantasy world. This is targeted. This is led by a, a sophisticated, likely state actor. And if Josh's reporting is right, uh, all roads lead back to Moscow on this. And Josh, one of the things that you and I have both seen in covering Cuba for these years and the U.S. diplomacy or lack of it is that after that opening, there may well have been some hardliners. And even Secretary Tillerson was saying, basically, we're not blaming Cuba, but that Cuba, being the kind of government it is, must have known. 
And so they could have had some help. It could have been an inside job from some people in Havana who were not happy with the Obama Raul Castro opening. That's right, Andrea. Officials who have been working on this investigation for the last year plus now tell us that they still don't think it would be possible for Russia to carry this out entirely on its own without at least some cooperation or some tacit uh, consent from the Cuban government, given the fact that it's a small island, uh, they have their own heavy surveillance on the island, uh, and the fact that you know this would have to have been pretty, uh, really with the knowledge of the Cuban government for it to take place in hotels, such as Hotel Nacional, uh, essentially run by the Cuban government and other facilities like that. Chris, Cuba has denied it. Russia hasn't commented overnight. One quick question, Juan, where were you on 9-11? I was in the Treasury Department, the fourth floor, looking south over the Potomac River, watching the smoke rise from the Pentagon. We were watching what was happening in New York on the TV, um, and we were evacuated from the Treasury Department. Um, we raced, there was a core group of us raced to the Secret Service headquarters, um, and frankly, we're watching the sky, uh, praying to God that another plane wasn't heading toward the, the Capitol or toward the White House. And as we later learned, of course, one would have been had it not been for the heroism of the crew and passengers on the Flight 993. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Juan. Thank you, Josh. All right. So what do you guys think? Make sure you tell me in the comments below what you guys are thinking about this, how you guys are feeling. What do you think is about to come from this what do you think is about to go down you know what i mean let me know in the comments i'd really like to know your your guys's opinions um like i said tonight is wing it wednesday so we will be going live so you can tell me in there also if you'd like all right since last year the u.s military has been working to reverse engineer the weapon or weapons used to harm the diplomats according to the trump administration officials Congressional aides and other briefed on the investigation, including by testing various devices on animals. As part of that effort, the U.S. has turned to the Air Force. The U.S. has turned to the Air Force and its directed energy research program at Kirtland Air Force Base in New Mexico. Yeah, directed energy research. And they're acting like we don't have the this type of weapon, the sonic weapon. My ears are ringing right fucking now, okay? We have the shit, okay? No doubt. Um, and I will show you that in one second. All right. Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico, where the military has giant lasers and advanced laboratories to test high-power electromagnetic weapons, including microwaves. What a fucking surprise, right? No, not at all, because we already knew that. Although the U.S. believes sophisticated microwaves or other, another type of electromagnetic weapon were likely used on U.S. government workers, they are also exploring the possibility that one or more additional technologies were also used, possibly in conjunction conjunction with microwaves officials and others involved in the government's investigation say now they're using a multitude of different electromagnetic weaponry apparently the u.s has said oh shit i'm sorry one second i apologize damn it all right that's awesome at least it came right back to where i needed the U.S. has said 26 government workers were injured in unexplained or sonic attacks at their homes and hotels in Havana starting in late 2016, causing brain injuries, hearing loss, and problems with cognition, balance, vision, and hearing problems. Strange sounds being heard by the workers initially led investigators to suspect a sonic weapon, but the FBI later determined sound waves by themselves couldn't have caused the injuries. Okay, so clearly, once again, we know it was sonic weapons, so we know there's some sort of sound being used. Whether or not they used a mobile um, Doppler or a mobile Nexrad or they used microwaves with said um, sonic waves, you know, sound waves. I think it, I, th I can agree on that with this article that it would have been a sonic weapon maybe in conjunction with microwaves or a sonic weapon um, with 
you know, some sort of other electromagnetic radiation. Who knows? But once again, like I've said numerous times, the numbers, 26, of course, two sixes. Of course, it always is. Strange sounds heard by the workers initially led investigators to suspect. Okay. But the FBI later determined sound waves themselves couldn't have caused the injuries. All right. This year, one U.S. worker in China was diagnosed with similar symptoms after hearing bizarre sounds in... Not trying that. It's right there in case you want to. And more from China are being tested. The precise motive remains unclear, but the incidents have driven a wedge between the U.S. and Cuba that has led Washington to remove most of its diplomats and spies from the island. Early in the investigation, senior U.S. official raised the possibility that the illness or the illnesses were unintended consequences of some new spying technology, but the fact that incidents continued long after they became publicly known has cast doubt on the possibility that the damage was accidental. In testimony before Congress last week, State Department officials were unanimous that the incidents should be considered attacks. So, now we're being attacked on our, you know, own soil because it's an embassy, so it is our soil. So, that's a big deal if that was the case. But as you know, everything on this earth is literally staged. Everything is connected. Everybody, like secret government-wise, is all part of the same groups. And they all are two sides of the same coin. It does not matter. All right, so... The State Department has come to the determination that they were attacked. Ambassador Peter Bodie, who leads the task force responding to incidents, told a House Foreign Affairs Committee panel. So I love this right here, this picture. A Russian-made Lada car passes by the Russian embassy in Havana. December 12th, 2017. But, like, this is, like, some of their, you know, like, the picture that the news uses, of course. Like, look, it's a Russian car. It's got to be the cause of the attacks. Or, see, that proves that there was the attacks. A U.S. official separately tells NBC News that the U.S. has no reason to believe this was anything but an intentional act. If Russia did use futuristic weapon, use a futuristic weapon to damage the brains of U.S. personnel... It would mark a stunning escalation in Russian aggression towards Western nations, compounded recently by the use of military-grade nerve agent poison to, or new, damn it, the use of a military-grade nerve agent to poison an ex-spy and his daughter in Britain. Although the full extent of the resulting diplomatic fallout is difficult to predict, a determination that Russia was behind the Cuba attacks would trigger outrage in Congress and foreign capitals and call for an immediate, concerted response, especially as President Donald Trump faces continued questions about his willingness to challenge Russia and President Vladimir Putin. Now, this seems pretty effing intense if you ask me, guys. Like I said numerous times... This all comes right after talks of the Space Force. This all comes right after the ISS got a hole in the Russian part, and now it's they're saying it's a drill hole and it's sabotage. So that's just another reason for the U.S. to be pissed if it was sabotaged. You know, see what I'm saying? You know, because that would damn it. That would endanger the lives of U.S. astronauts also. So it's hard to tell where this is about to go, but with all the talks of the currencies collapsing, you know. I would suspect that we got something hella crazy coming very, very soon, guys. All right. Russian government officials did not immediately respond to requests for comment. In a statement, State Department spokeswoman Heather Narurt said, The investigation is ongoing. We have made no determination on who or what is responsible for the health attacks. The Office of Direct... Director of National Intelligence declined to comment. Man, I have like cotton chops so bad. Oh my lord. Um, after initial publication of this story, Cuban officials blasted it as irresponsible via Twitter. Carlos D. Cosio, Director General of the Cuban Foreign Ministry's U.S. Department, tweeted Cuba does not act and does not allow anyone to act against the diplomats of any country in its territory. 
Cuban ambassador to the U.S., Jose Raymond Cabanas, said it was painful to see how NBC News echoes others to mount speculation without evidence using dark sources. Where are Cuba sources? Well, that's a good point because these news companies are scripted and they say exactly what they're supposed to. So, you know, irresponsible? Well, monopolized. All right. Um, I don't think I'm going to read the rest of this. It is still has a few, like quite a few more paragraphs. I will show this last video and then I have something else to show. New reporting this morning from NBC News. Intelligence agencies investigating attacks on U.S. diplomats in Cuba and China now strongly suspect that Russia is to blame. 26 government workers in Havana had mysterious brain injuries starting in late 2016. And then this year, one U.S. worker in China was diagnosed with similar symptoms. Joining me now with more on this is NBC News intelligence and national security reporter Ken Delaney. And so this has been a mystery. The CIA, the FBI, other intelligence agencies have all been working to try to figure out what exactly happened here. Why do they suspect Russia now, and what's the evidence that they have? Well, it's still partially a mystery, Chris, but they have more and more evidence, they say. Three U.S. officials tell us pointing to Russia, including communications intercepts that suggest that the Russian intelligence agency was involved. Now, really, there was only three suspects from the beginning here, Russia, China, and the Cubans. So the Russian and the Chinese intelligence services operate in force in Cuba, and it's still believe that it's possible that some element of the Cuban intelligence services cooperated with this. The other interesting thing we're reporting here is that one of the technologies used to injure these American spies and diplomats was some kind of microwave weapon that is so sophisticated the Americans don't even fully understand it and they've been <laughs> testing some kinds of aspects of this technology. Uh, so kind of reverse engineering? Is that what they're trying to do? Absolutely because uh, you know the military has been the U.S. military has worked on microwave technology and tried to deploy it as weapons over the years apparently the russians have as well and it can make people pause the u.s has microwave and sonic weapons it's not no you know conspiracy it's not like a thought the american government and secret third party like corporations you know or whatever they are called whatever you want to call them the corporations and the companies that the U.S. government has liaisons between and they send all their technology to these companies like Lockheed Martin or whoever you know um, and then they reverse engineer or build well we have had microwave technology we have weapons we have it all okay so to make it seem like it's so sophisticated and that we don't have it that's unbelievable as it gets to me just saying Initially, this was thought to be a sonic attack of some sort, Chris. What do we know about the people? Were individuals targeted? Was it just a group that was targeted? And do we have any idea about a motive? Why these people and then? Again, these are only theories, but what our sources are telling us is that this was an intentional attack because initially people thought it could be a byproduct of some spying technology gone awry, but it's now believed that this was meant to hurt these spies and diplomats, some of whom have suffered serious brain injuries. And if this is confirmed that it was Russia, Chris, it would be a game changer because the sort of unwritten rules of the spying game are you don't go after the other person's spies and diplomats. You don't try to hurt them. Yeah, you That's can throw them out of the worse. country, but you don't. Uh, so where are they in this investigation? I mean, are they close? Are they, is there, do they feel like they are at a place where they will have a definitive answer? They do believe that eventually they will be able to go down the track of possibly even indicting people, but they are far from that right now. They're not even willing to say within the U.S. government that they are 100% sure it was Russia yeah so that's where we are now you know it's now being blamed on Russia and there you go just to further understand
boom. See that sonic weapon right there on top? Could have been something different. Could have been microwave. Could have been all kinds of EMF type weapons or ELF or EHF. You know, it could have been all different types of weaponry and it could have all of it in there. Who knows? It could produce all of it. All right, so I think I'm gonna cut this video. It's a little long. Um, I do have something else I need to show real quick though. So stick around and you will see it. Phil James and I'm out y'all, peace. All right, so real quickly, just because you know, the U that news article made it seem as if the US didn't have sophisticated microwave technology or you know, whatever. So microwave auditory effect. Now, I'm sure some of you have seen this, but I'm going to go ahead and cover it anyways for those of you who have not those of you who have not seen it. I will cover it. The microwave auditory effect, also known as the microwave hearing effect or the fry effect, consists of the human perception of audible clicks or even speech induced by pulsed or modulated radio frequencies. The communications are generated directly inside the human head without the need of receiving electronic devices. Now, think about that for one second. What's that sound like to you? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, uh, voice the skull, right? That was patented in 1996. I do believe it might be 98 but the point still stands and still remains that we have it you see what I mean now all right the reason real quickly it's not in here but the reason the communications or the clicks or the speech are produced directly in here is because the microwaves use your skeletal structure as an antenna to receive its transmission or its frequencies so, with that being said, let's go ahead and continue real quick just to, you know, give you a little background. The communications are generated directly inside the human head without the need of any electronic uh, devices. The effect was first reported by persons working in the vicinity of radar transponders during World War II. In 1961, the American neuroscientist Alan H. Fry studied this phenomenon and was the first to publish information on the nature of the microwave auditory effect. The cause is thought to be thermoelastic expansion of portions of the auditory apparatus. Although competing theories explain the results of interferometric holograph, uh, holograph, I don't even know how to say that, tests differently. But anyways, the point is, the microwave technology, it uses your skeletal structure as a type of an, an antenna and you can literally make people hear like a voice inside their head you can make people hear clicks or high pitch ringing or the things that people like us experience you see what i'm saying so Bill james y'all and i'm out much love peace